Okay, in today's tutorial, we are going to go over how to make a really simple mathematical formula that will solve an equation for us. Um, in the previous tutorial, it was the very first one, we kind of set up the project and we made this random VI that doesn't do anything. Um, in fact, it won't even run. Um, so we can just ignore that. And what we really need to do is we need to make a new uh, VI. So I'm just going to right click on my computer, go to new VI, and then it's going to, oops, uh, bring up two new screens, remember the front panel and the block diagram, and I'm just going to save these as, I'm going to save this as quadratic formula. And it's going to append the dot .pi automatically. So we'll see here, it should have saved as quadratic formula, it shows quadratic formula here, it's great. Um, so I just found randomly this website that shows what the quadratic formula is for our reference. I'm going to shrink this down. So it's not so huge on our screen. Whoop, that's not on. There we go. Perfect. Um, so that'll be for our reference, so we always know what the quadratic formula is. So uh, one thing real quick to go over. There are three types of uh, inputs and outputs that we can specify in LabVIEW. Uh, controls, constants, and indicators. A control is placed by right-clicking on the block diagram, going to numeric, uh, and placing this numeric control. So this is going to give us a control, something that the user can put a number into or, or whatever, and it will output, you can tell by this arrow that's kind of pointing to the right, in LabVIEW it reads from left to right, so it's going to output a number. So you can think of this as something that the user can control in this program. Then we can also place uh, indicators, and an indicator, you can see here it comes on the block diagram, with an arrow kind of going into the left side of it, showing that it will receive a number or a piece of data. So what I can actually do is if I left click on this little arrow, see where that little orange dot pops up, it's kind of flashing. If I left click there, and then drag this little spindly uh, line here, and then I left click again over on this input, I can actually wire, and this is called a wire in LabVIEW, wire these two uh, elements together. And what this is basically doing is it's saying, okay, whatever's in numeric, put it in numeric too. So if I run this program, I'm going to save it real quick, and if I run it, whatever number I have here is going to show up here. So I can create a 4.56. So this is, you can think of a control as an output and an indicator as an input. Also, there are constant numbers. So this is just a simple constant, no matter what I put in any other control, whoops, if I wire it this way, Whatever I have in this constant is going to be that, exactly that. It's going to be constant, and it always puts out a 4 no matter what is going else, uh, going around, going on anywhere else in the program. So to do the quadratic formula, we'll need four inputs. The user is going to have to get four inputs or four controls. So we're going to start over here again real quick. So we need an A, a B, and a C according to this formula. So we're going to numeric control, and I'm going to name this A. If I hold control and click and drag something, it'll make a copy of it. And I can do that as I can do it with multiple things if I want. Um, I don't want to do that because I only want these three. Um, but you can easily copy things by hitting control and, and dragging it away. So I'm going to call this B, and I'm going to call this C. And then I'm going to have two uh, outputs, um, and we're going to do this a little bit different. Actually, I'll, we'll get to that in a little bit because I want to do something kind of interesting for that. Um, so let's go ahead and start working on the formula. So in my experience, it's usually best to start from, if you look down here, the most inside, you know, if you were to write this out in, in parentheses, you know, in a standard line equation, you have all these parentheses everywhere. It's usually best to start in the most, you know, the lowest level parentheses, the deepest parentheses in there and work your way out, you know, kind of starting in the middle of the equation work out. So we're gonna start with this b squared minus four ac portion, uh, portion first. So in order to get these functions like squared and minus and divide and multiply, um, we're going to right click on the block diagram, go to numeric, and we can see add, subtract, multiply, divide, square, square root. Um, there's a bunch of them in here to negate, get, get the reciprocal of something, absolute values, all kinds of stuff. But for right now, we're going to need um, a square. So we're going to take a b, wire the output of b into the input of this square function, and now what comes out the other side here will be squared. Uh, now I want to subtract, and remember I'm just getting this by right-clicking, going to numeric, multiply. We're going to need multiple of these multiplies, b 
because, whoops, so you see what that did there. If you make a copy of something and the output is close to an input, it will sometimes, yeah, there we go, automatically wire them together. And in this case, I don't want that. Um, so I just deleted that wire. Um, but I need um, a constant here. So I need to go to numeric, constant. I'm gonna wire that to this multiplier, go four, and then I multiply that by A, and then that number, I need to multiply by C. So I need to take this B squared, and I need to subtract four times A times C from it. Now I'm gonna do a little trick here. If I hit Control U on my keyboard, it will automatically clean up this formula, and or what I've written here, and kind of organize it and shorten all the wires and everything and make it easy to read. So let's go over this real quick. So we have B squared, and that goes into the subtract, and we have minus, so we're subtracting four times A times C from it. Now what we need to do is we need to square that. I'm sorry, take the square root of it. So go to numeric, square root, and now we have b squared minus 4ac, the square root of that. Now we need to do two things here. We need to, uh, first of all, get the negative, or we need to negate b. So we're gonna get this negate function, and all this does is just whatever you put in here, it multiplies it by a negative one, so you get the negative in it. So we need negative b, and we need a plus, add, and we need to subtract, because we're gonna do both of those things. I'm going to draw these over here. So we have negative b, and I'm going to wire the negative b to the top terminal of both of these. And I'm going to wire this uh, output, which is the square root of b squared minus 4ac, to the bottom portion of both of those. So now I've taken three pieces of data, and I've turned them into essentially two pieces of data. right? So I have negative b plus or minus square root of uh, b squared minus 4ac, this is the negative square root of b squared, I'm sorry, this is the square root of b squared minus 4ac coming out here, and then this is taking b, uh, negative b and adding that number to it, and then subtracting it from it. So here I have negative b plus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, and here I have negative b minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. The next thing I need to do is drop a multiple in here, whoops, keep doing that and I need to get A, and I need to multiply that by two. And then I need to divide each of these numbers by two A. So I'm gonna take this number that goes in the top. Um, it's important to note here uh, that LabVIEW with these numeric functions, it will do the top, you know, divided by the bottom number, the top plus the bottom number, the top minus the bottom number. So you kind of think of the top as like the first part of that uh, equation. Um, so I'm just gonna finish writing that up. Then this is gonna be, oop, I need to change this to a two, because we want two a, not zero times a. And then this guy will just wire it into here. Okay, so this formula here, I'm gonna hit control U again to clean that up. This is calculating, uh, it's gonna be two outputs, the positive version and the negative version of the formula b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now what I want to do is I want to create an indicator, but instead of giving two indicators, I want this to give me the values in an array. And uh, so in order to do that, it's a little slightly more advanced, but if I right click on the block uh, diagram and I go to array, and then I go to build array, this guy is pretty cool. It has these little handles that you can like drag down, and what this will do is, as many things as you wire into here, it will take them from single element, uh, element, single element data pieces, and bundle them into this array. Um, and we'll see a little bit more clearly as we go on with this. So we only need two, so I'm gonna drag this back up. And because I'm a positive guy, I wanna do the positive version on top, or the first element in the array, and the negative version, the second element. So what this is doing is it's taking these two pieces and it's gonna put them into an array. It's gonna take single elements and form an array out of them. So I'm gonna show you a little trick here. If I just right click on this terminal here and I go to create indicator, 
it will create an indicator both here and on the front panel that is automatically formatted for the data type that's coming out of it. So you can see this line here is thicker than these lines over here. This is showing us that while this is still a double, it's an array now. And we're not looking at a single element of data, we're actually looking at multiple elements. So if I come over here on the uh, block diagram, you can see that uh, I can actually drag this down just like I can the build array, and I can get it to show me a variable number of elements. But I know there's only two here, so I'm just going to drag it back up to say two, and I'm going to call this uh, zeros, because that's what this form is going to do. It's going to show us the zeros of these three numbers. So I'm going to save this. It should be everything we need to do. Uh, and I'm going to run it. So right now, it's coming to not a number because we're doing an illegal function right now. We're dividing by zero because a is zero here, and we're trying to divide by that from this formula. So I'm just going to put some numbers here. I'm going to do one, 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 just see what happens. And I'm not sure why this isn't working. Let's see. So I'm going to do two, five. All right, stand by. Okay, so sorry about that. It took me a little while to figure out what was going on. It's been a long time since I've solved the quadratic formula. Um, <laughs> so I forgot that you can, it's possible to have coefficients that return no zeros, uh, meaning that the you know parabola drawn doesn't ever cross the x-axis. So I was trying to figure out why I kept getting that number and thinking something wrong with my formula, but I just remembered that you got to have the right number of um, or the right coefficients here. So I've selected some that do work um, and that do return zeros, one, negative two, negative three, and you can see that it gives the zeros of three and one. If I change these, you know, 0.5 and make these decimals, we'll see that it will do, um, you know, decimals just as easily and it'll give us zeros. Um, so that is a quick summary of how the block diagram and the um, front panel kind of work together, controls and constants and I hope that was helpful. Again, um, this will be uploaded to the notes underneath the video. You can see I'm just going to save this project just as it is. Um, and then uh, you should be able to look and see this and play with it yourselves if you have any questions. Alright, thanks.